can't believe I'm on 2003 already. So 2003 started for me in February. I went and met the research vessel Odyssey in the Maldives. And I had, I had started my master's in 99 and then I took three months off to go to the Odyssey. And so I told myself that I couldn't meet the Odyssey again until I was finished with my master's. And so that winter was the first time I could. And I was on the boat for a month. It was absolutely an awesome experience. I was there with one of my interns from 2002 and I had gone out to create a program with the education director that was on the boat, who is a dear friend of mine. And so it was just a spectacular experience. I mean, it was so different than any place I had been. The water was so crystal clear. It was amazing. Um, and it was just a, a neat experience to see all these different species. We had false killer whales. We had a Brutus whale, sperm whales, spinner dolphins, um, went to different islands. You know, it's just such a different, a different place for me. But the really cool thing was we were sailing one day and five or six whales came up next to us and they traveled with us for about 10 minutes. We're looking through the guidebooks and we're like, what are they? And I think like a year or two, a couple years before the Longman's beaked whale was declared a new species based on um, a body or two that had been recovered and a couple skulls. And we thought, well, maybe this is, these are longmans. I mean, we thought maybe that was a possibility because it wasn't matching anything in the guidebooks. And in fact, we sent it in to a beach whale specialist who said that had confirmed that they were longmans beach whales. So that was a really, really cool, um, a cool experience for me. And I remember being on an earth watch trip with Ken Balcom and he was telling me about it also. And so it was just a, for lots of different reasons, it was such a really cool experience. So then we started whale watch season out in Massachusetts. Um, Echo was our first humpback of the year, I believe. Um, and she's, she's often a very early whale that returns to the area. So like a lot of seasons, 2003 kind of started out slow. I mean, some days we had two minky whales. Um, other days we had some more whales. We had a whale named Beacon. Um, and then we also had a day where we had ace and apostrophe together. And I was laughing about some of these pictures. They're so bad, but I have to show you, that's what I'm starting with. And so when I zoom in, the fact that we can even identify the whale is sometimes um, impressive because I'm dealing with all these pictures that sometimes the whales are really far away. Um, so we had a lot of, um, a lot of fin whales. Uh, we were up on Jeffries and Tilly's a lot. So kind of moving around, there wasn't a whole lot of, even though it was the, the entire year, there weren't, there wasn't kind of like a consistent trend, but especially more so in the spring and the fall, um, the whales were just all over the place. We had some really cool trips um, with feeding fin whales though. This was a cool shot that we got on one of the trips. It's like rolled over on its side. We had crazy krill one day. Krill is not something that we see often. And so when we do see it and the ocean looks red because there's so much krill, it's such a neat thing. We had lots of, um, once we kind of got going, there were quite a few multi-species days, um, which is always really fun. We had lots of dolphins too. I saw lots of trips with dolphins um, and one that was like 500 plus dolphins. So we had a couple trips of of super, super pods of dolphins. A couple of the whales that we were seeing were hornbill. Um, we had reefer and her calf up on Jeffries. And then one day we were up there and we had this whale, Tanith and her calf. And it's probably the trip that I remember the most from 2003. Um, Tanith was entangled. She had line through her mouth down both sides of her body, um, one resulting in a buoy. Um, at one end, the other one, we couldn't see it just kind of sunk down. And then she had another line wrapped around her tail um, and going back to a white buoy. And so I drew these lines in here. The, the white line is the tail. Okay. And then the yellow lines are the two lines that were coming out of her mouth. You just can't really see them in the water in this picture very well. And then the other purple line is that line that's wrapped around her tail. Um, that's going back to the buoy. So we stayed, stood by. Um, we called the Center for Coastal Studies and they were going to try to mount a rescue, but they are down in Provincetown and we were up on Jeffreys. I don't know, it's probably 50 miles away. Um, so we stood by for about an hour and they weren't going to be able to get up there in, the, in time. I think it was an afternoon trip. So unfortunately we had to leave her, but the next day they went out and they were able to disentangle her. And it was on the news that night. I, mean, I remember 
kind of chuckling at the news because they showed a picture of owl and her calf it wasn't tanith and her calf they didn't have any footage of the actual rescue or anything that they were sharing but um but they were able to disentangle her and what was really cool we went out a couple days later and saw tanith and her calf again and the calf was really active um lobtailing and and breaching so it's cool to to at least have a, a happy ending to that day that in the moment was very very stressful um, and very sad for that whale, you know, to see it, to see it suffering. So that was, so that was the end of June. So the next couple of weeks, we were just, again, we were kind of all over. We had tear, we had flask, badge, compass in her calf. One trip um, on the data sheets, it was, there were bubble clouds everywhere. So we had a little bit of feeding, but around mid-July is when the feeding really started. And what I remember about 2003 is being on the southeast corner of Stellwagen Bank, okay? So we went all the way down to the 800 and the 133 line. So that's this yellow star, the kind of pinkish outline is vaguely vaguely the outline of Stellwagen Bank, but Gloucester's up on the top and that was the star is where we were. We spent a good chunk of time down here on the southeast corner for the next month. But it was crazy. I mean, I just remember, I remember so much feeding. And I'm so grateful that Sarah was also naturalist because I did not take pictures of feeding and breaching and all that. So these are all of her pictures because I just would, I just have a lot of flukes and dorsals and that's about it. So a couple of the whales we had, we had Moro and Putter, Fracture. Uh, this is a cool picture of him coming up right, right from underneath the boat. We had Fulcrum. Um, who we haven't seen in a couple of years, but she has those really bad propeller scars along her back, but has successfully had calves since she was hit by a boat. Um, we had Pepper and her calf that year. Calf never got a name, so I'm not sure if it just hasn't been named or if it hasn't been sighted since then. We also had Salt and Wasabi, and Salt was really seen a lot that summer. She was on the data sheets um, often throughout the summer and, and even into the fall. This is a cool picture of wasabi with a real high fluke. And then one day we were out there and they both were, this says it all, it's mom clearly teaching the calf surface behaviors because they were both doing all the different things. It's so cool to get to see, to see that. And then this is salt feeding. I'm 99% I'm sure she's got that little dingleberry thing on her, um, on her palate. So I thought these pictures were so funny as I was scanning them. I was like, wait, I already scanned that picture. And then I looked at it again. I was like, nope, it's just exactly the same picture. So they're feeding the same way every single time often. And so then we had beacon again. We had beacon a lot this summer too. Um, this is beacon tail breaching and breaching. And then we had July 20th we had a lot of say whales move in. It was literally like one day, there were 20 to 30 say whales. And I remember one of them lunging right beside the boat um, on the port side, like looking down and just seeing the whale's mouth open. And it took this big lunge right beside us. First time I had ever seen that, but really amazing day. Apparently there was a right whale there too, a couple of humpbacks and lots of minkies. There were a lot of minkies around this summer as well. Um, Barb was a whale that was around at that time. And then the end of August, we had Rizzo's dolphins, which was so cool. This was the first time that I had seen Rizzo's. Um, we had just a few, it was a small batch. And if you had asked me, I would have sworn this was 2005, but apparently it was 2003. So the whole time halfway through July and well into August, we were traveling to the Southwest, Southeast corner of Stellwagen, very long trips. And then we would kind of bounce around a little bit. Sometimes we would go way down to the southern part of Stellwagen. Other times we were, um, you know, north and west of the northwest corner where we had been the previous couple falls. Um, so a couple of the whales we had were buzzard and cosmos. This is actually a belly up lobtail. We had Eden and jungle. And we had this really cool day. I remember this one really clearly. We had all this mackerel at the surface, okay? And that's just a cool picture of the mackerel underneath the water. But the whales, you know, mackerel are really fast. And so they have to lunge really quickly through the water. And so you can see the energy that's involved for them to feed on mackerel just from these pictures. Um, you know, they're coming up to the surface in much more of a rush than they, than they normally would be. But I have this vivid memory of a fin whale lunging in. And it was like, you know, in the movies when you see the subs coming up from 
down at depth, like a third of the fin whale's body came straight up out of the water um, as it was lunging. It was so, so very cool. And then we also had a little bit of that weird amphipod feeding where they just kind of slowly lunge through the water. They're not blowing bubbles or maybe bubbles might come up like way behind them. So we also did a fundraiser that year and I loved looking at this picture because there are so many people from all different walks of Ocean Alliance life. They had that summer's interns, we had volunteers, we had interns from the summer before, people that worked at the office, people that worked in the lab. Um, just really cool to have so many, so many people come out and share it with us. And then we had two batches of great interns that year. We had a group of interns in the summer and a group of interns in the fall and they were still living at those cottages not sure if that was a year of lots of little animals in the cottage or not. I don't think it was quite yet. I think maybe it was the next year. But we just had, a, it was a really, it was a great, a great group of interns and college students. Um, and it's, it's probably, I was thinking about this, it's probably one of the years where more people went on um, to be scientists or teachers than any other year that I had, which I think is kind of interesting. So in the fall, we had interns from Australia, which was very cool. Um, we had someone from Indiana and someone from New York. Um, and then Linda, who also was volunteering from Indiana. So three of us were from Indiana actually that year. And we traveled a bit. We went to Foxwoods for a night, had so much fun. And then they all traveled to New York. We must have had a nor'easter come through. And so we knew that we were we were going to lose a couple of days. And so they all went down to New York City and they came back and I'm sitting there doing my doc talk one day and they all have sweatshirts on and that sort of thing. And I turn around and they've all taken their shirts off and they're just standing there looking at me with their I love New York shirt, New York shirts on. And it took a lot to not just pause and giggle at that. So to wrap up 2003, the conference that year was in Greensboro, North Carolina. Of all the places I had been to conferences, this was definitely not the most exciting. <laughs> we did have an ice storm while we were down there and I never understood what an ice storm was until I had experienced that. Um, but it was really fun. It was the first year that we, Jen and I had done a workshop at a conference. So we had planned it in 2001 and it actually came together um, with some people that are now very dear friends of mine. Um, had a really great time. It was the first time I had done a poster um, for the big Society for Marine Mammalogy Conference too. So I had done a poster on my data that I had collected that year. And it was just a fun as conferences always are. I always feel so lucky that I get to go learn about whales, which is my favorite thing with many of my favorite people. Um, so conferences are always something that I look forward to every year. So that is 2003 in a nutshell. I hope you enjoyed it.